Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to install Windows 11 IoT or Internet of Things. So this is kind of a super deep bloated basic version of Windows 11. So if you want a super clean installation without all the bloatware, you could give this a try. But one thing I will say before we get started here is that it's only a 90 day trial, but there are ways around it if you look in the right place online to, you know, to find out how to activate it and so on. All right, so I have a little write-up here of what Windows IoT is. So Internet of Things on the long-term servicing channel. So designed for devices that require long-term stability and security with minimal updates. So you get long-term supports, 10 plus years. Optimized for embedded systems such as kiosks, medical devices, ATMs, and so on. Minimal bloatware, which is always a good thing enterprise grade security and customization and lockdown features all right so to get this version of windows you just need to go to the windows 11 iot website and click on get started for free and then you just have to fill out this form and download the iso file so for this you don't have to worry about getting an activation code so you can just put whatever you want in here as long as you fill out every field that has the uh, asterisk there and then once you download the file, just simply burn it to a flash drive if you're going to be installing it on a physical computer, but we're going to be doing it in VMware Workstation as an ISO file. So VMware Workstation is now free to use. So if you want to try out some virtualization, uh, you could use that. So this should also work in VirtualBox and even Hyper-V. And you could actually run Hyper-V on Windows 11 Home if you want. We have a video that shows how to configure that. Okay, so I already have one going here, so we're going to make another one. All right, so we're in the main VMware Workstation interface here, so we're going to go to File, New Virtual Machine. We're going to do Custom. We'll choose the Workstation 17 because that's what we're running here. Okay, so now you want to click on Installer Disk to point to your ISO file that you downloaded, which is right here. Nice long name. So you'll see it says could not detect which operating system because normally if you put the Windows 11 ISO file, it'll read it and then configure your settings appropriately. But this, this is a good thing. It's not like this and I'll show you why. So we'll click on next. All right, so now you can pick Windows 11, but I'm going to do Windows 10, 64 bit. So that way it's not going to bug me about encrypting the virtual machine files or the drives. And it's also not going to require TPM. So on this version of Windows 11, you don't have to worry about the typical hardware requirements like a TPM. All right, so we'll have Microsoft Windows, Windows 10. All right, we'll call this Windows 11. IoT 2, since we already have one. And then just pick your location where you keep your virtual machines. Now this I noticed if you use BIOS, it seems to work better than UEFI for booting. So I had UEFI on the first time I tried it, but it didn't seem to want to boot to the ISO file, even if I went into the settings and pointed it to the virtual CD-ROM. So we'll do BIOS. Number of cores and processors. You can make this wherever you want. I'll just do two cores, two processors. I'll give this about 8 gigs of RAM. We use network address translation, which is the default setting. Controller type will go with the recommended and the recommended hard drive type, NVMe. All right, so we'll create a new virtual disk. So you can make it whatever you want. I'll say 80 gigs. I like to store my virtual disks as a single file because if you're not backing them up, I don't see any reason not to because you just end up with multiple files. Uh, when you do this and if and if you want to move them to a different virtual machine it's more of a pain okay there's our disk name we'll keep the default all right click on finish all right so now what we want to do is go to the settings for this virtual machine before we start and go to the network adapter and let's disconnect it because that way, when we do the installation, it's going to ask for a Microsoft account, like it normally does, but you have to use a work or school account. You can't use your personal account. 
but if you don't have the internet connected, you could actually create a local account really easily. All right, so we'll click OK. All right, so now we'll start it up. All right, didn't even have to press a key to boot from the ISO file. Close this out here to get it out of the way. This full screen here so we can see what we're doing. All right, typical options here. We'll do English for our language. Keyboard, US. So obviously we're going to install Windows 11. There's nothing to repair. We have to check this box. Everything will be deleted. But it doesn't matter because it's a blank new drive. Accept the agreement. All right, so here's our disk. You could either create a partition from here. If you just click on Next, it'll do it for you. And it'll use up all the space on the drive. All right, so we're installing Windows 11 IoT, and we're keeping nothing. So we'll click on Install. All right, so now we have to go through the installation process. So this will take a few minutes, so I will pause the video and be back for the next step. Okay, so we're rebooting here. Okay, so the installation is continuing. All right, rebooting again. Okay, so now this is a pretty normal looking Windows 11 setup screen here. So we'll click yes to our language or region here. Keyboard. Skip the second keyboard like usual. All right, we'll click on I don't have internet since we disconnected the Ethernet connection here. All right, so now you can see it just goes right to a local user account setup here. So let's just call this guy Bob. Password for Bob. Okay, and that's just the typical security questions you get when creating a local account. First pet's name, let's say Rex. City where you born, Seattle. Childhood nickname, Bobby. All right, then, you, of course, you could come through here and turn all these off, which I always like to do because they don't need to know what they don't need to know. But you could read through these yourself and see if you want to keep anything on. All right, so now we're going through the typical user profile configuration. So this will take a couple minutes, so we'll... Probably pause again and be back when this is done. All right, so now we have our Windows desktop here. And you can see our start menu is pretty plain. And then also we can see our resolution is not right. Of course, I'm recording at a low resolution here, so that's why things are a little weird looking. So let me go back up to the settings here. This virtual machine. Let's enable the internet again. All right, and then you can see down here we have our license is expired, so it's just an evaluation. But this is kind of strange because on the one I did earlier, it said I had 90 days, so that's kind of interesting. All right, so now let's install VMware tools so we could get a better resolution going here. So we'll just go up to here, right click on the tab, install VMware tools. Click on install, and we should wait a minute here, and then we'll see the uh, pop-up for the installation. Okay. 
And if you don't get that pop-up, you could just go to File Explorer and go to the virtual DVD drive and run the setup from there. Oh, now you can see it switched back to valid for 90 days, so that's interesting. That's probably because we didn't have internet, so it couldn't go out to the Microsoft servers and look it up. So now that we have the internet back, you can see it found a 90-day trial. All right, so we'll just go through this. We'll do the typical installation, which is usually fine. Just let this run here. All right, so now you can see we have full screen back now that we have a proper video driver. Right, click on finish. Then you could restart. I'm not going to restart right now because we're going to be restarting for something else in a minute here. All right, so real quick here, you can see for the taskbar, we only have the one task view. We don't have widgets. We don't have Copilot. So we can turn that off if we want. And if we go to our apps here, you can see what we have going here, just Edge and Paint and so on. And if we go to the Start menu, we have a few things here. Go to All Apps, just the defaults, Calculator, which is the old version of the calculator. Edge, got the old version of Notepad. Paint, snipping tool, and we have some backup tools. If we go to system and about, you can see it's 24H2, and here's the OS build, and it shows you the addition here. You go to activation, it says it's active, even though it's technically you know only good for three months. All right, so one thing you'll notice, too, is there is no Microsoft Store if you do want to install some apps back. But what you could do is open a admin command prompt, CMD, run as administrator. Then we'll type in wsreset.exe-i. So you're not going to see anything. So then you're going to need to just give it a couple minutes to do its thing. And then after that, we'll go ahead and reboot for the VMware tools and also for uh, this option here. Okay, let's go ahead and restart the VM here. Put in our password since we're not using a pin. And now you can see we have the Microsoft Store. Now we could install some of the apps back if we want them, such as, let's say, the new Notepad or that type of thing. All right, so as you can see, it's pretty easy to install the Windows 11 IoT version. So like I said, if you want to do it on VMware Workstation, it's now free to use. It used to be $200, and now they're giving it away for free. Uh, VirtualBox should work as well, and then same with Hyper-V. And then, like I said, when you do the installation, you might want to do it as a Windows 10 VM instead of Windows 11, so it doesn't add a TPM and try to encrypt your virtual machine files. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you could download the Windows IoT version. And then I'll also put a link in the description for VMware Workstation in case you want to try that as well. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.